Okay, today we will talk about 7.8 and 8.1, but you will see we spend more time on 7.8 actually. Now, improper integrals, there are three types. Actually, I should just say two types of improper integral. The first improper integral is uh, the one in, uh, integral to infinity. And then the second one, integral with singularity. Now, our textbook actually called the first case uh, integral enforcing infinity, infinite integral interval. Infinite interval. And the second one, they call the discontinuous integral. Okay, now then the third topic we will talk about uh, in this section is uh, comparison theorem. that will later on becomes a method for us to see if an integral is convergent or divergent. Okay, let's start with integral to infinity. Uh, why when I draw a line here, it looks ugly? That's a cheating way. Okay, uh, the first one, integral to infinity. It's basically an integral idea. It's basically an integral from some number to infinity uh, fx dx. Of course, the other version of these, uh, you can also think about uh, the other version is if we come from negative infinity instead to a certain number v of fx dx. Okay, now how do we treat this kind of integral? Uh, we will do it this way. Uh, the idea is, suppose I have this uh, coordinate system and my function is actually start from somewhere goes to infinity. Let's say this is my A. And I need to find the area from under the curve from x equals to a all the way to infinity. Now, the way if we uh, compute this will be done as the following. We will see it as equals to the area from A to T. So instead of going to infinity right away, we find the area to T first. So later on, uh, instead of finding the exact number, uh, this, this integral here, after we integrate that, it's supposed to give us a number, right? But the one here, the one here, it will give us a function, an area function of t. Now then, after that, we push the t goes to infinity. And from there, we push the t to the infinity. Once we get the area function, then we uh, push the t goes to infinity. It will go to a number when t goes to infinity. Now that's the plan, okay? Now we will see the similar procedure when we have uh, integral to negative infinity, the other version. So to, to say, to say, to write it in words, maybe I write it this way. This integral 
from a to infinity of fx dx can be seen as the area uh, on the interval uh, from a to infinity, right? Now, that's equals to uh, the area on a to t first, and then we push this t to infinity. Okay, so that's equals to limit t goes to infinity of from a to t of fx dx. That's our plan. And when it deal, when it involves negative infinity, then we modified our plan. Let's say, for example, let's say, for example, if I pick question, let's say, question number, I don't know, maybe question number eight. Question number eight. Uh, integral from zero to infinity of one over two x plus one q dx. Now then, I will say, oh, this is equals to limit uh, t goes to infinity of from zero to t. Okay, so I find the area up to t and later on I will bring that area function uh, to infinity as t goes to infinity x plus y q dx now then from here we integrate as usual uh, let's say u equal to 2x plus 1 don't use t don't use t because we already use t for the limit of uh, for the limit of that integration, right? Okay, so the... Um, the lower limit is one. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, the lower limit is one, so it should be one. So, oh, fine. One here. One here. Thank you. So this is two dx. And then I will have come back to limit goes to infinity. Uh, once I substitute my x becomes u, then my 1 becomes 3, and this guy here becomes 2t plus 1, and then uh, 1 over u, q, d over 2. Professor, I can't really hear you very well. I don't know if it's just me, but I can't really Oh, hear you. sorry. Let me change my position. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Thank okay. you. Okay, now then, let's see. So I will integrate that. That's one half times negative one half one over u squared from three to two t plus one. Do I integrate it correctly? Anyway, uh, then that's equals to here limit t goes to infinity of negative one four uh, two one over one over two t plus one squared minus one nine this is equal to negative one four of and I plug in t goes to infinity at the bottom then 
this part here will be comes one. And t goes to infinity. Zero, okay. minus one over i, that's one over thirty six. Okay, uh, that's for number a. So you see what happened is this what happened is this once you once we rewrite that as limit, uh, once we write that as limit, we actually just work on the integral until very, very end. But of course, I still need you to write the limit in front of the uh, in front of the term. Okay, you still need to write the limit in front of that. That's a requirement. Uh, but uh, we know that we don't worry that until much later. Now, the reason we use limit here because, especially because you will see some cases later on, in which uh, we cannot just apply the in infinity right away. Here, actually. Uh, if I try to abuse the integration, I can just omit this and just integrate it right away, integrate it right away, and I will get incorrectly. I mean, uh, I will get, oh, this is negative one four, uh, one over two t plus one, uh, actually no, give me a second. One for one over u squared, and then this will be from three to infinity. You see what I mean? If I don't use limits, and we end up happens to have the same answer, but that's you. That could be not the case in other situation. Okay, that's why we need to use the limit. Still use the limit. Let's see if I can find such question. And that at the same time, let me. Uh, deal with the one involving negative infinity. Let's say the easy one, number 10. Uh, integral from negative infinity to zero of two to the r dr. Then notice that this is from negative infinity to zero. Now I change that in negative infinity up to t. And then I push the t goes to negative infinity. Okay, I hope you see that it's we don't really worry about that zero though. We don't really worry about that zero. I can change that zero to any other number and we are still fine. Uh, yeah, uh, the issue is what happened when t goes to negative infinity. But can you integrate this yourself? Long time no see. Uh, limit t goes to negative infinity of one over ln two two to the r from t to zero. Let me pull that one over ln two. So two to the zero minus limit t goes to negative infinity of uh, 2 to the t. Uh, dot 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 that will be uh, this this will go to 1 the first term go to 1 the second term goes to 1. The second term will go to 0. Because the t goes to negative infinity, so 2 to the negative infinity uh, is 0. Now, remember, somewhere in the past, I think in chapter, hmm, chapter, yeah, chapter 6, we talk a lot about exponential function. So you still have to remember that, though. The graph of 2 to the x, right? The graph of 2 to the x, that's an increasing function, right? This is uh, y equals to 2 to the x. Now then what happens if I go very far to the left instead? Then the value will get very close to zero. Okay, so that's for number 10.
Now, the thing is, what happens if both sides actually go, one side goes to negative infinity and the other one goes to positive infinity? Uh, let's say, for example, integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of y cubed minus 3y squared dy. So the interval is from negative infinity to infinity. That's the interval. What you can do, what uh, we will do is we'll find a number in between those negative infinity to infinity, any number actually. Uh, usually in this situation we choose uh, zero. Okay, but we can it's actually um, repeat again. Always do you like uh, any time it's from negative infinity to infinity, you should pretty much always choose zero. Not always. You can. That's what no. we usually do. But you can choose, let's say, negative two or positive five. Uh, basically, then I will break this integral into two integrals, uh, negative infinity to zero, or if you choose five, negative infinity to five. Plus integral from whatever a that you choose to infinity. Uh, basically, uh, the idea is now we have two uh, infinity to deal with, one on the left, one on the right. By splitting them up, by splitting them up, uh, we deal with them one by one. So what happened here, for example, this is a limit t goes to negative infinity of t to zero of y cubed minus 3y squared dy. Uh, plus limit, I need to use another variable. Let me use uh, maybe phi. I don't want to use s because it looks like phi. So phi to infinity of integral from 0 to phi of y cubed minus 3y squared dy. And then we go, go, go on. You will see that if one of them goes to infinity or negative infinity, like this one, I believe this guy will go to negative infinity, right? This guy will go to negative infinity. Like if you integrate this, and then you take the limit, t goes to negative infinity. I think that will be negative infinity, so. Now, in this situation, if either one of the partial uh, part of the integral, any one of this integral goes to infinity or negative infinity, then we say this integral is divergent. This original integral is divergent. Would you say that the limit does not exist or would you just say it's divergent? Uh, if the limit does not exist, yeah, if the limit does not exist, then the integral is divergent. So we, so so you actually ask uh, two different things and somehow uh, uh, mix them together. But that's a good question. Though. Now, okay, so when I integrate these, I will get one four y cube minus. I'm sorry, y to the four, and then. Y cube from zero to t, and I will end up with zero minus infinity. Is that right? Okay. Now, because part of this, if we have the sum of two integrals and one of them goes to infinity, if one of them goes to infinity and negative infinity, then the integral is called to be divergent. So, if limit of the integral does not exist in this case uh, goes to infinity or negative infinity uh, then the integral itself 
and the integral itself involving infinity is called uh, convergent. Is it okay? Uh, the word convergent itself means it actually goes to a number, a finite number. Okay, that's what the convergent means. Uh, we say that an expression is on is convergent if the limit exists. Okay. Okay. So let me continue here. Then we say this this will then be divergent. I'm sorry. I, I think I write it wrong here. Uh, Did you mean divergent? At the time? Yeah, that's right. Okay. I, I meant divergent here. I meant divergent. Okay. So, so professor really quick so if <laughs> if the uh, limit of the integral goes to negative infinity or infinity it's considered divergent and that means that it's not going toward a specific value that's that right uh, but uh, but uh, I have to clarify something uh, we are talking about the value of the integral if the value of the integral goes to infinity or negative infinity then the integral is divergent now uh, not in the sense that the interval goes to infinity because the interval may go to infinity like question number eight and number ten you see the integral goes to infinity but the integral it's still convergent it goes to a specific number you see okay so the interval goes to infinity but the integral is still finite then the integral is convergent the now, distinction the distinction is interval and integral that's right okay so uh, we are dealing with in these three questions in these three question number eight number 10 and number 12 uh, in all three questions we deal with integral with interval goes to infinity Right, number eight, the interval goes to positive infinity. Number 10, the interval goes to negative infinity. And number 12, the interval from negative infinity to infinity. Now, however, the integral, the integral, <laughs> I hope I say it <laughs> clearly, uh, the, even though the interval goes to infinity, uh, but the integral still give us a finite number in number eight. So this, in this case, the integral is convergent. Number ten. Number ten. The interval includes negative infinity, yet the integral goes to a finite number one over ln two. So the integral is uh, convergent what happened here what happened in number 12 if any part of the integral goes to infinity or negative infinity or does not exist then the whole integral is divergent okay now let me ask you to do one problem from the book uh, let's see which question is good. Something that makes you think. Okay, maybe number 20. Number 20, integral from 2 to infinity or y e to the negative 3 y dy. Okay, let me ask you to try working on this problem. I think I can give you, how many minutes do you think you can do it? Integration takes one minute to the limit, writing. Uh, let's say four minutes. Okay, let me give you four minutes to do this. Okay, let's see. Uh, this is equals to limit 
e goes to infinity of integral from 2 to infinity of y e to the negative 3 y dy. Uh, what do I do here? A u sub. U sub? No, I don't think. Well, so. well mm -hmm. make it e to the u. And then you change what your y is. And your y becomes um, u over negative 3. Oh, and then, and then, and then? I think you're thinking too And hard. then integration by parts. Yeah, we can do integration by parts oh. right away from here. Though. Yeah, we can do integration by parts right away from here. Uh, then this will be 1, 0. This is negative 1 third e to the 3 negative 3 y this is 1 9 e to the negative 3 y so the integral becomes let me scroll it up uh, then it becomes limit e goes to infinity of negative one third y e to the negative three y minus one nine e to the negative three y from two to t. Let's see if t equals to infinity of negative one third t e to the negative three y. I'm sorry, three t minus 1 over 3 e to the negative 3 t minus negative 1 third times 2 e to the negative 6 minus 1 9 e to the negative 6. I think I can factor the one third out for the first one. It's negative one third limit t goes to infinity of t e to the negative three t plus e to the negative three t minus e to the negative six times Negative seven overnight. A okay, little algebra there. Okay, little algebra there. So the part here will be plus seven over nine e to the six. Now the thing is, how about this part here? This is negative one third. Notice that if I uh, plug in infinity here. It goes through infinity for the t part. So this guy here will go to infinity while this guy will go to zero. You see that? So we cannot tell right away if it goes to infinity or goes to zero, right? Okay, so what I will do is I do limit t goes to infinity of t over e to the 3t and my plan is later on I do log it all. Is it okay? While the second term inside of that limit, this part here will become what? Zero. Become zero. Okay, now then I apply log it up rule, I get negative one per limit e goes to infinity of 1 over 3 e to the 3 t plus 7 over 9 e to the 6 and uh, what will this part be? Zero. Go to zero. Okay. 
plus 7 over 9e to the 6. So the final answer is 7 over 9e to the 6. Now I hope now you will uh, see even more the need of writing it in terms of uh, in the limit condition. Because limit without limit condition, you will plug infinity in and you end up with infinity over infinity or infinity times zero, you know, which is undetermined. Right? Uh, once we slow down a little bit, writing it as a limit, uh, then it will be easier. <clears throat> uh, let's go on further. The second case. The second case, integral with singularity. We are talking about this kind of uh, this kind of uh, uh, function. The function that has something goes to infinity. So something like this, for example, that it goes to infinity here, uh, or it goes to infinity from the left hand side. Okay. Let me call this instead of x equals to zero. Let me call this x equals to a. Now suppose I have an integral, suppose I have an integral from a certain number up to a. Let's say that's the interval of the integration. Or integral from b to a of a function. But it turns out that we get a singularity. It ex, uh, the value of the function escape to infinity when x approaching a from the left hand side. Now then we will need to rewrite these uh, limits of integration into integral from b to t, where the t is approaching a from the left hand side. So basically, I integrate from b to t, and then I push that t closer to a from the left hand side. Okay, so to find that area, uh, I basically find the area here. I really, I'm really happy that I can shade it this way. This is something I cannot do on the on the <clears throat> on the whiteboard. <coughs> now, so the green area is the area from a from b to t of that function f x, and then I push the boundary t. I push this boundary t here. I push this boundary t here. Gets closer to a. Now. Uh, I get closer to A from the left hand side because the A is on the right end of the integral. So the interval is the, the, the right end point of that interval. Okay, so if I write it down the concept, the concept that uh, if I want to find the area uh, or under maybe I should say on the area on that interval from uh, B to A. And we have singularity to F A. Our textbook will say this continues at A. Uh, we can also say that we have asymptote at x equals to a, however you want to say. Now then this is equals to, equals to limit t goes to a from the left hand side of integral from b to t of fx dx. 
Okay, so this area here is the same to the area on from B to T. Okay, uh, with limit T goes to A from the left hand side. That's how we get this integral. Now, what happened if the singularity is on the left end point? Suppose we talk about this interval here. Let's say the interval of the integral integration is from A to C. So the way we do it, we will get the integral from T to C. We get this integral first. And then we push the T goes to A from the right hand side. Okay, so let me write it down here. If suppose I have integral from A to C of fx dx and we have singularity at A then I will replace that A by T but then I push the T closer to A from the I can say I wrote something wrong here. Up here, I wrote something wrong here. This yeah. is wrong. Yeah, yeah it should be wrong minus. Side. Yeah, wrong side. It should be from the left side. From the left hand side. Okay. Now that's the concept. That's the concept. Uh, so uh, for us to do such uh, integral that involves singularity we have this continuity we need to observe first where do you just continue uh, where the discontinuity happens let's say for example number 28 integral from 2 to 3 of 1 over square root of 3 minus x dx Where does the integral escape to infinity? Where is the singularity? In the three. The three? Okay. Yeah. So that's the guy I need to change, right? So this is equal to limit t goes to three integral from two to t square root of 1 over square root of 3 minus x dx and then I approach these three from left or right? From the uh, left. From the left hand side. Okay, now then from here what you will do and I will ask you to do this is to integrate this. Leave the limit behind for now. Let me give you one or two minutes to integrate this. I think you need to do use substitution there. Is it right? Yeah, you need to use use substitution. Okay, try it in two minutes.
hope you get the same answer. Well, yeah, I came out with two. Yeah, I got two also. Okay, good. Now, let's see a slightly more complicated question. For example, question number 34. <coughs> question number 34, integral from 0 to 5, W over W minus 2 dW. The problem here is the following. So if we look at the interval from 0 to 5, from 0 to 5, where is the singularity? Be at 2. The singularity happens at 2. So I need to break this interval into two parts, from 0 to 2, but not including 2, and then 2 to 5. Okay. So this is integral from 0 to 2 of w minus w minus 2 dw plus integral from 2 to 5 w over w minus 2 dw. Okay, well, again the similarity happens at 2. Then the first integral, I will rewrite that as integral from 0 to t, where the t goes to 2 from the left hand side. Plus integral from what? Let me use s this time, but be very careful. When you write your S, don't make it look like 5. Okay, limit T goes, I'm sorry, S goes to 2. Goes to 2 from the right hand side of W over W minus 2 D. Okay, let me ask you to work on this. I do one of them, and then you later on you do the second part. Okay, so this is limit t. Goes, you know what? Let me separate them then. Let me separate them. So the first part limit t goes to two on the left hand side of integral from zero to t w over w minus two t w. How do you do this? Notice that they are actually improper fraction. Okay. It's improper fraction. The same degree. Right? So I suppose to divide. I suppose to divide. But you can do this little trick here. Uh, I match the bottom and compensate that. You see what I'm doing here? No, what just happened? I change the W becomes W minus two plus two. Okay, so you didn't really change it, but you changed it, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if I if I divide it, if I divide it, W divided by W minus two, I will get one, W minus two, and then I get two here. So the quotient is one plus two, two over, over w, w minus, minus two. two. Now, but with what I did here, I hope you noticed that by subtracting and adding by 2, I basically create the same situation. Because this guy now, let me use another color instead. This guy now, this guy now becomes what? 
that's my one. That's my one. Plus two over W minus two dW. You see what I mean? That will be limit p goes to two from the left hand side of w plus two natural log of w minus three from zero to p. This will be P goes to two from the left hand side of P plus two natural log of W. I'm sorry, P. Minus zero plus two natural log. Oh, absolutely. This guy will be two plus two L and Y. Two L and zero. About L and of zero? No. Yes. Is what? That's that's not that's not. Yeah, that's negative infinity. Yeah. Right. That's negative. Infinity. I mean, oh, okay. Ln of zero is negative infinity. Okay, I see. Well, uh, to to be, it's actually undefined. It's actually right, undefined because there is no ln of zero. Right? Yeah, but but uh, under the condition of limit, under the condition of limit, this will be ln going to. Uh, very close to zero from the positive side. Okay. And that's why I say infinity here. Okay. Now, okay. and now because part of this big integral, uh, let me go on. Uh, this is blah, 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 blah. Uh, then we call this diversion. If we see, remember that we only work on one of the integral. Right, we only work on this integral here. And it's already give us undefined. I mean divergence. Okay, if if part of that integral is divergent, then the whole part must be divergent too. <coughs> okay. And then therefore if I go <coughs> so Integral from zero to five of w over um, over w minus two dw uh, is diverging. <clears throat> Everybody okay with this? So even mm -hmm. if we had done the other part, since there was uh, the, the two is there that other part would have come back to version two, right? Uh, I expect that's the case also. Yeah. So just because, but, like, so there won't ever be a time when you do one part and you go through it and it works out and then you have to go do the other part and it comes out divergent. We don't need to because once we have one part is divergent, then the sum must be divergent. The question is not, uh, the question is not what is this integral? Mm -hmm. The question is this, the one I put, put uh, Kind of like cloudy, right? The question is this, this one here. But we know that this will be divergent because part of that integral is already divergent. Okay. Okay. Now, Thank you. now the thing is, the thing is, what happened if I I compute this and I get the finite number? Then I have to still compute this one. <coughs> 
Yeah, that's what I was. That's more of what I was asking. Uh -huh. so sometimes you know you might get a finite number, and then you have to do the other one. Uh -huh. and then it comes uh -huh. back divergent. Yeah. So you kind of just yeah. Once one of them divergent, can stop. But if okay. uh, but if one of them gives you finite, then you still need to work on the other one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, why I chose this problem? Uh, seems like this problem is hard, huh? Okay. Now let's do it easy way. And I hope you will see that when you try to do it easy way, you will get it wrong. Wrong way. This is so a wrong way. I don't even say incorrect. That's wrong. <laughs> Imagine if you don't notice the singularity and you just integrate it. You say, oh, this is equal to integral from 0 to 5 of uh, 1 plus 2 over w minus 2. And then you will get this is equal to w plus 2 ln of w minus 2 from 0 to 5. Get five plus two L N three minus zero plus two L N two. You get five plus two L N three minus two L N two. You will say the integral is convergent, it has a finite number. But this is a very wrong way. This is a wrong way to do it. And you see what happened if you don't do it right. You may think that uh, we are okay. But no, that's not the case. This is a wrong, wrong way. How do, how do you want me to color this, by the way? So that you know this the is wrong a wrong way, way to do it. Huh? Red. Probably red, okay. Uh, let me see if I have a red color. Yeah, this nice. red, uh -huh. okay. it's a wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. Uh, don't do this. But through this example, we also see a new, a new uh, situation. What happens if the singularity actually happens in the middle of that interval? If the singularity happens in the middle of the interval, then what do we need to do? Like if it happened at 2.5? It is possible. Doing? I mean, I mean I'm, I'm talking about like between 0 to 5, the singularity happens somewhere in between. Now, if it happens somewhere in between, then we need to split it into two integrals. In fact, imagine if, imagine if, just, just for ideas, just for sake of ideas, imagine if I have the integral, integral from 0 to 10 of uh, 1 over x minus 2, x minus 5. Notice that in the interval from 0 to 10, from 0 to 10, where is the singularity for the function? There's uh, two of them. And those are? 2 and 5. At 2. 2 and, and 5. At, yeah, 2 and 5. Okay. So then for me to integrate this, I need to integral from 0 to 2 plus to two from two to five plus from five to ten and the nasty part is because this guy here uh, has two singularities then i need to break it up even further that's integral mm -hmm. from two to three plus integral from three to five you 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but don't worry, I don't think I will ever ask you this kind of question. <laughs> if I do, it must be a project. But uh, no, I don't have such such plan at all. Okay. Now the reason the reason I uh, I, I want you to focus on how to deal with the interval because we know how to do the integral already. Okay, that's the, the reason we learn technique of integrations before this section. So that right now we can focus on just the, the interval for which we can apply the limit idea. Okay. Uh, I have one more question I would like to do. And this one happens to be a very important one. We need this later on. We need this later on. Uh, we call this P integral. Our textbook does not call it that way. I want to call it that way for now. P integral. Now this P integral from one to infinity. Now what is P integral? P integral is the integral where the integral is one over x to the p dx. And the limits of integration is from one to infinity. Now, uh, <clears throat> the thing is, we will have three cases here. This integral will be convergent. When P is greater than one, it has to be strictly greater than one. And it will be divergent. when P is less than equals to one. Now we will use this a lot later on, so please memorize. Maybe I write it down. You see this color here. We use this a lot. Okay, now I want to prove this now. I want to prove this. Okay, let's separate uh, some uh, uh, trivial case first. For p equals to 1. For p equals to 1, then the integral becomes 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx, right? That's equals to blah, 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 blah. Limit p goes to infinity of ln absolute of x from, zero, from 1 to t. So the limit p goes to infinity of l and t minus zero but this goes to infinity that's that version <clears throat> now what happened when p greater than one for p greater than one integral from one to infinity of one over x to the p dx will be equal to limit t goes to infinity of integral from one to t of x to the negative p dx. That's limit t goes to infinity of 1 over 1 minus p x to the power of 1 minus p 
1 That's equal to limit t goes to infinity of 1 over 1 minus p t to the 1 minus p minus 1. So far, is it okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, P is greater than 1. If P is greater than 1, what happened to 1 minus P? Positive or negative? Negative. Negative. That would be negative. Okay. So, then what happened is, this guy here is negative, yet the T goes to infinity. So what is, uh, so basically it becomes, maybe I write it this way so that it becomes better seen. So that's one over one minus P times one over T to something positive value. Right, if I bring it down, it becomes positive. Right, it's supposed to be P minus one. Maybe I change it back to P minus one. But p minus 1 is greater than 0, while this goes to infinity. So that will be 0 here. This will be 0. This is 1 over p minus 1. Therefore, the integral is convergent. That answers the first condition. If the exponent of x to the p on the denominator is greater than one, it would be convergent. Okay. Actually, you can say that's one over p minus one. But my goal is this: uh, the issue is not with the the issue is not with this one. I can change this number one here into something else like two or three or four or five. You know, you see what I mean? Okay. Our problem is when it goes to infinity, does it become convergent or not? The answer is yes, if p is greater than 1. Okay, now what happens if the p is less than 1? <clears throat> what happens if the p is less than 1? For p less than 1, you will see that the work that we did here the work that we did here actually all the same later on. Let me copy that. It's all the same. The only difference is, the only difference is now that my P is greater than one. I'm sorry, P is less than one, my bad. My P is less than one. Which means one minus P is positive, right? Okay, and later on, infinity to positive exponent is 
Un tener Infinity. So it diverges. Mm -hmm. I will stop here. Uh, we come back in a couple of minutes. Maybe right now in on my computer is 542. Let's come back at 555. Okay. okay. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start again. Uh, we're still on 7.8. The third part of this section is on comparison theorem. I will write down the statement of the theorem first. And then I'll give you the illustration to help us later on. Okay, the statement of the theorem is as the following. Uh, let fx and gx be uh, continuous functions on interval A to infinity. And uh, Fx is greater than equals to Gx and both of them non-negative. So pictorially, it looks like this. Pictorially, Let's say uh, this is my A here. Now then let's say Fx is greater than or equals to Gx. And both of them above the x the x-axis. Now this theorem consists of two parts. First one, part A if integral from a to infinity of fx dx is convergent then integral from a to infinity of gx dx is also convergent. <clears throat> now let's see first. Let's see first. Now when we say the integral here, the integral from a to infinity of fx is convergent, it means the area under the curve for fx the area under the curve of fx is finite. It means the area here is finite. Is it right? Now, but the function fx is greater than gx, that implies the area under gx 
must also be finite. It will not escape to infinity. You see what I mean? If the blue part is, uh, if the blue part is finite, then the green part must also be finite. The green part here will also be finite. Is it right? Now, on the other hand, the second part of this is <clears throat> I need to go up a little bit so that you see the statement of the comparison theory. If, on the other hand, integral from A to infinity of GX dx is divergent, so the green part here is divergent. If the green part is divergent, then the area under the greater function, larger function, must be divergent. Actually, to help me with the notation, I should make it this way. <clears throat> so the area of under fx is actually the blue and the green part. The area under gx, just the green part, okay? Now, so if the area, the green part, the area for the green part is already infinity, if it is divergent, then of course the area for the green part and the blue part also divergent. Now, usually, the question we have uh, here is not to compute the integral, but to find if the integral convergent or divergent, is it finite or goes to infinity or maybe go to negative infinity or basically not convergent. <clears throat> Let's see, for example, suppose I do Suppose I do question number 50. That integral from 1 to infinity of 2 plus e to the negative x over x dx. Now, the question is not... Uh, find the integral, but only to find if this is convergent or divergent. <clears throat> now, uh, do you think this function, the integrand, uh, will bring us to convergent or divergent? And let's play with that integrand, 2 plus e to the negative x over x. <clears throat> you can see that uh, this is 2 over x plus e to the negative x over x, is right? <coughs> now, then the integral from 1 to infinity, integral from 1 to infinity, here. Notice that this guy here is what? Mm. 
Is it convergent? Um, is it convergent oh, or divergent? Hmm? It's converging on zero. Ah, convergent on zero. What do you mean? Um, the one in the middle. Yeah. Huh. Will that okay. integral be convergent or divergent? Uh, hmm. That I don't know. Sorry, I shouldn't have spoken up so quickly. It's okay. Don't worry. Now, yes, the integrand. The integrand when x goes to infinity, this integrand will go to zero. But no, I'm not talking about the integrand. I'm talking about okay. the integral. Yeah, is does the integral converge or diverges? Diverge, because and it's x to the first. That's right, because this is two times integral because from one to infinity. Oh, because p equals one. Is that what? That's right. Oh, okay. Uh, because of the p integral. And okay. this guy here is divergent, right? Okay. <clears throat> so part of this, part of this uh, function here, I can bound it. Uh, this guy is greater equals to integral from one to infinity of two over x dx, right? <clears throat> which is uh, two times <coughs> integral from one to infinity of one over x dx. Now this guy is divergent by p integral where the p is equal to one. Now, the thing is, if this integral here is divergent, if this integral here is divergent, then the greater integral must also be divergent because this guy consists of something else on the top of that green part. It has extra. Okay. Is it greater than or equal to because it is um, divergent determined by the one over x? That's right. Huh? So two okay. over two plus e to the negative x over x. This function is greater or equal to two over x. Are we required to say those words in our answer, like when we're on the exam, divergent by p inter? Oh, you need to be, yeah, you need to give me the, the reasoning. Otherwise, you need to work it out. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's why we prepare that, uh, that p integral earlier, so that we can just quote it. Otherwise, we have to work it out. Okay? Now, that's for number 50. You see that I bound it below by something divergent. So just determining that one component of it is divergent means that we're done. We don't have to do anything else. Well, you need to show that it is bounded below by something divergent. Okay. Number 52, on the other hand. <clears throat> number 52, integral from zero to infinity. Notice that we, they don't use one, they use uh, zero, okay? of r tangent of x over 2 plus e to the x dx. The hard part is you need to have done enough integral and have a good feeling about uh, some uh, integrands to tell if this is supposed to be bounded below or bounded above. If we bound it below by another function, then you want to say that this is uh, actually going to infinity, a divergent. But if you bound it above, it means you are trying to show that this integral is convergent. Now, then let's take a look on the integrand. 
arc tangent ah you know what i'm lazy to put that <clears throat> i will write it as tangent inverse x tangent in for x will be less than equals to pi over 2. Is it right? <clears throat> in fact, to say even further, I don't need the I don't need the absolute sign. Once I know that the x is positive of zero. Okay? So then I can say tangent inverse x over 2 plus e to the x is less than equals to pi over 2 big over 2 plus e to the x. <clears throat> now to go even further, Actually, I can say more that this is less than equals to pi over 2 over e to the x. See, if I divide by something larger, then the quotient will be smaller. Okay. Now, with that in mind, then... I can write that this integral is less than equal to integral from zero to infinity of pi over two over e to the x dx. Now, notice that I bound it above. So I better show that this last integral here is actually convergent. Okay. I will show that it is convergent. This is equals to a limit t goes to infinity of integral from zero to t. Let me pull the pi over two out and e to the negative x dx here. And you will show that this actually gives you a number. I think the answer is pi over two. So basically, we are saying that integral from zero to infinity of arc tangent of x over 2 plus e to the x dx is less than equals to pi over 2. Is it right? And therefore, it must be conversion. Number 54, number 54, this is integral from zero to pi of sine squared x over square root of x dx. I wonder if this is convergent or divergent. Notice that uh, sine squared x is always less than or equals to 1, right? So sine squared x over square root of x will be less than or equals to 1 over square root of x. Agree? Now, 
then this is equal to integral from 0 to pi oh, I'm sorry less than equals to integral from 0 to pi of 1 over x to the negative 1 half dx and then you work it out further and you will see that because I bounded above so I expect this last integral here to be conversion so the original integral that we need to observe there also be conversion <clears throat> okay now uh, to answer this number 54 it's actually much better if we uh, have the following in mind uh, that's question number 57 number 57 but this this is a, a problem that also show up a lot and the question is integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x to the p dx now let me remind you the p integral that we learned earlier the p integral we learned earlier was on the interval 1 to infinity integral from 1 to infinity 1 over x to the p dx equals to it will be convergent if when p is greater equals i'm sorry greater than one and divergent when p is less than equals to one that's the pin integral that we learned earlier okay usually we just call that p integral uh, to be more precise that's p integral on uh, one to infinity now what we have here is very similar but we have difference on the limit of integration <clears throat> uh, what we want to do is to find uh, for what value of p will this integral be convergent and divergent uh, we already uh, let's see let's see <clears throat> for what values of p will the integral be convergent work it up. Uh, I will treat uh, the following first. Ah. Okay, so for p equals to 1, get integral from 0 to 1, 1 over x dx. This is equals to limit t goes to zero from the right hand side. Notice that the singularity at zero, right? Okay, uh, I'm sorry, from left hand side, not right hand side. Limit t goes to zero. Oh, it is right, it's from right hand side. What am I doing? Uh, t here and then one here, one over x, t, x. And that's equals to, let me do it to the right hand side, limit t goes to zero from the right hand side of ln absolute of x from t to one, that's equals to ln one minus limit t goes to zero positive of ln t. <clears throat> This is zero, but this goes to negative infinity. Okay, 
So, so integral 0 to 1 of 1 over x dx is divergent. happen if the p is greater than 1. One over one minus p x to the one minus p, but I have uh, from p to one. That's one over one minus p. Parentheses when x equals to one, I get one minus p to the 1 minus p. Oh, I forgot the limit. Let me write the limit somewhere. Half point off, Thomas. Maybe p goes to 0 from the right hand side. No. But when t goes to 0, when this is go to zero, let me use another color so that you can see that. How about the exponent though? Notice that p is greater than p is greater than one. So what is one minus p? Positive or negative? Negative. Negative. That will be negative. Now what is zero to the negative? That's one, one over zero. That's supposed to be undefined, right? Yeah. But the zero itself is actually very close to zero from the positive side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one over zero positive. It's going to be infinity. That would be positive infinity, right? Okay, mm -hmm. that would be positive infinity. But then it means this integral is divergent. Okay, so when p is greater than 1, it's divergent instead. It's quite the opposite of when we have the interval from 1 to infinity. Interval from 1 to infinity, when the p is greater than 1, is convergent. What we have just now, when p is less than equals to 1, I mean, greater equals to 1, when it is equals to 1 or greater than 1, uh, it's divergent. Okay? Uh, you will see if we apply the similar idea <clears throat> for, for p less than 1. Uh, let me last of this. Copy that and put it here. So you see, I actually have the similar situation, but this time my p is less than 1. If p is less than 1, what happened to 1 minus p? Uh, that will be positive, okay? That will be positive, so I will get one over one minus p times uh, 
one minus now the t goes to zero right the t goes to zero positive and then you take to the positive power what will that be is zero to the positive positive power it's going to remain zero that will be remaining zero mm -hmm. so so t on the positive side slightly greater than zero okay but going to zero and then you take it to the positive power and it goes to zero okay so what happened then if i go on this is equal to one over one minus p which is convergent <clears throat> now, so to summarize, the p integral on the p integral on zero to one integral from zero to one of one over x to the p dx is convergent when p is less than one divergent when p is greater or equal to one now i hope you remember that now we have two type of p integral the one that our textbook mentioned the one that our textbook mentioned is this one here this is what our textbook mentioned. Okay, that's the one our textbook mentioned. One I just did our textbook did not mention. Is there a reason why they don't mention it? Because they want you to work on it. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's why they put it in number fifty-seven, right? But the reason I mentioned this because we use this a lot. We use this a lot. In fact, if we look back to our question number fifty-four. Question number 54, 54 redone. We redo number 54. Integral from zero to pi of sine squared x over square root of x dx. This is less than equal to integral from zero to pi of one over square root of x dx. Is it right? But this must be less than equal to integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over square root of x dx. Notice how that I play with the interval. The interval, the area from 0 to pi must be larger than the area from 0 to 1. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's say whatever this is the graph here okay, this is one this is pi now of course the area from zero to one must be smaller than the area from zero to pi is it right okay uh, but at the same time then we know that this is uh, this is convergent because t integral on now when we deal with p integral on 0 to 1 we need to write that completely for p is equals to 1 half which is less than 1 So with the technology that we learned from 
number 57, we can use we can use that to answer number 54 even faster. Okay, now let's uh, uh, close this session with suggested homework. The suggested homework will be a second. Suggested homework will be from seven point eight. Number five to number forty one. And then number forty nine to number fifty nine. I think those are good enough. A thing about number sixty one. Do you want us to just do all the odd ones or every single one of those? Just do the odd ones. I think okay. uh, if you do all of them, it's like you get overwhelmed. Okay. No, 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 don't, don't work too hard. Okay, every uh, odd one is good enough. But number 61 is actually worth mentioning. Okay. Number, yeah, 61 uh, is actually one of the important idea that uh, we need to take a look. Uh, basically, we have the following situation. Basically, we have the following situation. Uh, for example, for example, we know that integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx uh, is, maybe I use 1 over x cubed dx. Uh, this is supposed to be divergent. Is it right? Ah, no, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, no, 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 change that. Make it cube root instead. Let's say that's one over x to the uh, one third. We know that's divergent. Okay, so what can you tell about integral from zero to infinity of one over x to the one third? Yes. If I enlarge the domain a little bit, it would still. Yeah, that's right. It will still be divergent. Right? Because part of that is divergent, then if you enlarge the domain, it will still be divergent. Right? Now imagine if I go even further, uh, negative infinity to infinity. What will this be? It will also be divergent. It will still be divergent. Okay. Now, number 61 tells us uh, something that suppose if we do it incorrectly, we may end up getting zero. We may end up getting zero. Suppose, for example, uh, if I do it incorrectly, the following. I need to write this down. Uh, wrong way. integral from negative infinity to infinity of 1 over x to the power of 1 per uh, dx. And somebody said, you know what? Uh, I want to make the uh, t goes to negative infinity, uh, that's t to 0, 1 over x to the 1 per dx plus limit t goes to negative in, uh, the positive infinity of 0 to t 1 over x to the 1 third tx. Notice that I use the same t. Uh -huh. Okay, and then, and then uh, I say, oh, you know what? Uh, if I replace the, if I do substitution, if I do substitution or reverse the order of integration, what whatsoever, uh, let's say I say, uh, you know what, uh, x 
uh, equals to negative y. <clears throat> so dx equals to negative dy. Okay, and then I substitute this one here. So I get limit t goes to negative infinity integral from zero. I'm sorry, from what? If I replace the x by t, then my y will be negative t here. Okay, and this is zero. I get negative 1 over y to the one third here times negative dy. The negative cancels. Okay, the negative the negative here cancel with this one, right? So I get I get integral of uh, one over y to the one third dy, uh, and then because t goes to negative infinity, then negative t goes to Negative t goes to one. Hmm? If t goes to negative infinity, then t negative t goes to it goes to positive infinity. Positive infinity. Now then somebody may argue, oh, you know what, uh, this guy here, I can substitute that with this later on, let's call that whatever. So we may end up with this negative of 0 to uh, limit t goes to infinity. Uh, uh, basically then you end up with the same function here, the same limits, but they are opposite. One of them positive, one of them negative, and you call this, this is equal to zero. Now that's a wrong way to do it. That's a wrong way to do it. Okay. I think I explained it way too long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was pretty long. Uh -huh. Now, <laughs> basically, I try to show you that if you try to play it the wrong way, you will get wrong answer. And that wrong answer is zero. Okay. Now, uh, Put it this way, limit t goes to infinity integral from negative t to t, 1 over x to the 1 third dx. No, you cannot do it this way. You cannot do it this way. Why? The thing here with this interval is, yes, it's from negative infinity to infinity. Right? Yes, 0 is somewhere in between. Zero is somewhere in between, okay? And our plan is we have uh, t, supposed to be t and s. t goes to negative infinity at different speed compared to s goes to infinity. That's the idea. But once you use the same variable, once you use the same variable here, you change this back to t. If you change this back to t, then we get a fatalistic, uh, we get a, a very fatal mistake. We are saying that both of them goes to infinity and negative infinity at the same speed. But see what happened here. What happened here? We have limit t goes to infinity of negative t to t. And the guy inside here, the guy inside here is an odd function. And we know from calculus one that if you have a symmetric interval and the integrand is odd, then the area is zero. 
the mistake is actually the following. You have an odd function. You have an odd function. Okay, so when the t and negative t both goes to positive negative infinity at the same time, they always cancel. Imagine the following graph. Imagine the following graph. Uh, don't go too far. I think the easiest graph you can get is one of uh, is x. The graph of x. Graph of x. Ah, what happened? Now notice that what is the area on the right hand side if this goes to infinity? Infinity. That's infinity. How about the area on the left hand side if you go to negative infinity? It will also be negative infinity. That will be negative infinity, right? Now the thing is, if we do part of that integral and we get divergent, then the whole integral is supposed to be divergent. Remember that principle? Mm -hmm. Now, then suppose now I change, instead of I do it one by one, I deal with them at the same time. So let's call this five and this is negative five. Suppose, okay, what is the total area? It'd be zero. Zero. Now, if I change this becomes 50 and negative 50, what is the total area? It'll still be zero. zero. Still be zero. Now, if I change this, then this T, call this T and bring this to infinity and call this negative T, therefore it goes to negative infinity then the total area is still zero, yeah, right? But no, the idea of integration is you need to be able to chop that however you want it and the total area is still finite. If there's a way you chop that and you get infinity, then the integral is divergent, okay? So what's wrong with the, this concept here, the mistake is actually done by assuming that the T goes to infinity and you use the same variable t to go to negative infinity okay so that's why it is not correct the mistake is actually here mm -hmm. they're supposed to be different they're supposed to be different not the same that's the mistake why can I... that's the mistake okay this should not be both t's uh, that little detail is the one uh, plenty of people uh, make mistake on. Uh, to tell you the truth, I found one Takus 2 instructor at East LA College a uh, long time ago. Uh, actually did it wrong way. Basically he did this way. Uh, he did this one though. Uh, he did this question this question integral from negative infinity to infinity of 1 over uh, 1 plus x dx uh, or yeah I think it's yeah I think oh no 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 x 1 over x actually it's 1 over x not one plus x. Let's say one over x cube. I don't, it's way too long ago, so I don't remember. And then if you do this the regular way, you will see that it's actually, uh, if you do it wrong way, you will see that's actually zero. And his approach is actually doing, doing it using the t goes to infinity and negative infinity at the same at the same speed that's where the mistake happened and he got zero okay now that's a wrong way to do it okay now that's for this 7.8 i have approximately 15 minutes for 8.1 
but 8.1 actually on the EC side. Eight point one is on the DC side. Eight point one is on arc length. Okay, let's start. Suppose I have a curve. Suppose I have a curve. Let me make it like this. Let's say this is the curve. And I want to find the length of this curve from x equals to a to x equals to b. Let's say this is my A, this is my B. I want to find the length of this curve from this point here to this point here. Okay, I want to find the length there. Now, how do I do this? How do I do this? I will actually split this interval AB into a lot of sub-intervals into a lot of sub-interval, small interval. Uh, why I keep on doing this? Not an interval. Now, let me focus on one of the interval. Let me focus on, let's say I will use this interval here okay and then I super zoom it I super zoom it then I will see the following now imagine if this interval is so small such that the curve is basically becomes pretty much a straight line in that interval okay now then the distance here will be the dx while the change of the y here will be the dy I will call this section, I will call this section now ds. Okay, now the plan is actually, the big plan is the following. Then the arc length, the arc length. is equals to the sum of all such ds right so i have a ds here i have a ds there i have ds here i have ds here and a lot of ds's okay i try to make the interval i try to make this interval here as small as possible that's why I call that dx. Now then, how do we express that ds? Using Pythagorean theorem, then ds squared is equal to dx squared plus dy squared. Now, if let L be the arc length from A to B, then that arc length will be integral from A to B of dS.
but that ds is the integral from a to b of square root of dx squared plus dy squared. Don't forget that our a there and the b is actually for x, x equals to a, x equals to b. Now we cannot integrate this though. This is something we cannot integrate. Why we cannot integrate that? Well, because how many integral sign do we have? Just one. Just one. But how many variable of integration we have? We got two. There are two, the dx and the dy, right? Now it's not doable. So what we will do is I will factor the dx out. I will factor the dx out. So it will be as the following. Uh, if I factor the dx squared inside the radical, then I will have one plus dy dx squared. Is it okay? Yeah. And furthermore, and furthermore, then I get the square root of dx squared comes out to be dx. Now, this guy here, the one inside the parenthesis here, it's basically y prime. That's y prime. Okay. Now, of course, if the limit of integration in terms of y instead, if the limit of integration is in terms of y instead, then uh, let's call that from C to D, uh, square root of 1 plus dx dy being squared dy. If the limits of integrations in terms of y, y equals to C, y equals to D. Now, I will do only one problem from here, and then I think one or two problems from here, and then I'll let you go. Suppose, for example, I do number, let's do number 10. No, 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 not number 10. Let's do number 12 first. Number 12, that's integral. Okay, no, 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 not integral. Uh, I need to find the arc length from 0 to pi over 3. The arc length from 0 to pi over 3 of x of y equals to natural log of cosine x. Now, the x is from 0 to pi over 3. Now, then what is y prime? Um, 1 over cosine. 1 over cosine x times negative times sine x. Negative sine, yeah. Okay, so that's actually negative tangent x. So, 1 plus y prime squared will be 1 plus tangent squared x, which is? This can be secant squared. That's secant squared x. Therefore, the square root will be? Secant. Just secant x. Therefore, 
the arc length of the curve from 0 to pi over 3 will be integral from 0 to pi over 3 of secant x dx, which is long time no see. <laughs> natural log of uh, secant x oops, natural log of secant x plus tangent x right from 0 to pi over 3 and then natural log of what is secant pi over 3 it's 2 plus tangent pi over 3 minus natural log of secant zero is one, tangent zero is zero. So this guy goes to zero. So the final answer is natural log of two plus radical. Now, what if the, uh, we go back to number 10? The reason I didn't do number 10 earlier is because for number 10, we need to find the arc length for y from 1 to 2 of x equals to y to the fourth over 8 plus one over four y squared. Now notice that uh, the limit of integration, the curve is in terms of y. So the y is from one to two, which means I need to take the derivative of this x respect to y. That's one half y cubed minus one half y to the negative three. So you can do the derivative yourself to check my work. And what happens if I square this? dx dy. When I square this, I can factor the one half out above, right? So when I square that, I get one fourth y to the six minus two plus y to the negative 6. Now, if I add 1 to that, then I will have 1 4 y to the 6 minus 2 plus y to the negative 6 plus can I make it 4 over 4 when I add 1? But this yeah. is the same to 1 4 times y to the 6 plus 2 plus y to the negative 6, which I can now write as 1 half y cubed plus y to the negative 3 all squared. Therefore, the square root of that ex uh, expression, the square root of 1 plus dx dy being squared is equal to 1 half y cubed plus y to the negative 3. 
now. Then go back to the arc length, then the arc length from one to two. Otherwise, this integral from one to two of one half y cubed plus y to the negative three dy. You can compute this yourself. Okay, now I need you to work on this 8.1. Uh, I only give you two examples because that's basically what you need to do. Uh, I need you to do suggested homework will be 8.1 will be from number 7 to number 18. And number 7 to number 17. Just do the odd ones. Now, we need this on Monday. On Monday, when we do 8.2, you already need to know how to deal with 8.1. I'm sorry, 8.1. Okay? So, even though I don't do a lot, uh, that's because I want you to do a lot of problems from here. And we will continue on this 8.1 and extend it to 8.2, in which we will find the area of surface uh, revolution. Basically, uh, back in Calculus 1, Back in Calculus 1, we learned to find the volume of revolution. Right now, we want to find this, the, the area of the skin. So let's say if we have a ball, what is the surface area of a ball? What is the surface area of a cone? What is the surface area of any curve when you revolve that around x-axis or y-axis? Okay, now that's what we will do on uh, Monday. On Monday, I will do 8.2 and 8.3. On Monday, I will do 8.2 and 8.3. Now, very likely after that, I jump to chapter 9. On, I'm sorry, chapter 10. But there is also a possibility that once I'm done with 8.3, I jump to chapter 11. Uh, I think that's what I want to say right now. Okay, then. Uh, see you on Monday. Oh, I have one question. Yes, Nora. Sorry. Um, so I'm... for videos, uh, mm -hmm. like the lecture videos, part of 8.2 was in one of the lecture videos that you sent. Um, uh -huh, do you have uh -huh, uh -huh. other ones to recommend for maybe 8.3? Uh, I, will, I will post the lecture videos, let's say, a couple days or the latest Sunday uh, for you to watch. So okay. what happened is the lecture video for this uh, 8.1 and 7.8, I, post, I posted yesterday. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so I what I plan to do is uh, the latest Sunday, on Sunday, I will post the lecture video for 8.2 and 8.3. Okay. Yeah, is it okay? Yeah, thank you. You're very welcome. Other question, by the way, somebody else? No more? Okay, yeah. see you then on Monday. Okay. See you Monday, thank you. Bye-bye. All right. All right, see you Monday. See you.